Hello. I'm very grateful to be here. So my name is Elion Carsonan, and uh, I'm glad this comes just after Mike's talk of company Alien. We have the same name almost with uh, his company, and I'm precisely going to talk about names. Um, onomastics is the science of proper names, and in this slide, we have several names. First name, Elion, last name, Carsena, Namzor, a company name. By now, you've met people from all over Europe, the US. You probably start to recognize names from Slovenia or from the Balkans, because our brain, our brain is trained to recognize language and the sociolinguistics of names. But so far, computers, there is only a one way to sort names, it's alphabetic order, and what we brought to that is additional sort functions and classifications. Male, female, origin. Google, LinkedIn, Twitter, they have a lot of data about the, the world, and our objective was to be able to extract also valuable information about six, seven billion people just based on the name. And we started with two variables, gender and origin. It might be simple, it might seem simple to recognize gender, I thought, too. Um, but for example, Andrea Rossini is a male name, Andrea Parker is a female name. Sometimes, even without having a first name, you can guess the gender. That's the case in Russia, in Lithuania, in various countries. In some cases, you can't recognize the gender in Latin alphabet, but to some extent you can recognize gender when it's in Chinese characters, for example, for, for Chinese names. So, how can this be useful? Many databases have name and don't have much other information. One example is Twitter. Uh, we've seen what uh, you know, Twitter users think about football uh, during the World Cup, but do, the, do women care as much as men about football? Do uh, Germans care as much about uh, uh, you know, a match between Turkey and France, or probably slightly less? So it can be useful to infer this information. Another case is um, scientific databases. Uh, Today, many data scientists are around, less women than men, and recently we've done one analysis about the gender gap in science, which we presented at a conference called InspireFest about two months ago with uh, my associate Elena Rossini. Um, so this is branded gender gap greater because we do this type of analysis every three to six months. It's a pro bono project. And what we showed is that out of one million scientists, only 30% are women. And what we've seen also is that if we look at the highly cited scientists, the brightest minds of the world, there has been huge progression in the ratio of women between 2001 and 2014. And of course, it's very useful to be able to infer this information just from scientist names with a good accuracy. Now, the next study we prepare with Elena as part of this gender gap greater project is about corporate governance worldwide. Uh, how many company directors are men, women in uh, different countries? Germany, Croatia, uh, Slovenia, France, US, Canada, and to do that, we just created this simple flow. I mean, the actual one was reading a database, of course, but the first step is we read names. In that database, it's quite unstructured. Sometimes it's first name, last name, last name, first name, last name, very comma, uh, first name, and so on. So it's going to extract first name, last name, then we can extract gender, we can extract origin, and then we can write the result. So this extension, as you can see on the right, uh, 
requires an API key. So the extension is free, but you can uh, get the API key from, from our website, as for Alien Company. And one case uh, which we could visualize in a quite interactive way, this map is completely interactive online, so you can zoom, is Twitter inferring the likely origin of Twitter names to recognize diasporas. As you can see, there is a huge Irish diaspora, both in the United Kingdom and in the United States. It looks like there is no French at all in the US, because there are so many Irish people. But if you remove, you know, if you filter out the Irish, then you start to see some French as well. And if you zoom in Indonesia, you have very, very populated uh, areas, and they do a lot of geotag tweets, but then you filter out Indonesian names, and you start to see uh, all the expats in Singapore or Kuala Lumpur. Um, so, of course, this can be interesting to combine with what we've seen just before, which is sentiment analysis on, on Twitter. Um, we've applied different, uh, we've used this on different databases, and I'm mentioning this one because we presented it in Maribor University, uh, only two or three months ago with uh, the French Health uh, Institute. It's looking at who is who in cancer research. Uh, and this is what we call an onomastic millefeuille. It's much more clear when you understand that every uh, of those uh, colors represent a type of name, Slovenian name, French name, German name, and so on. And Every, uh, every uh, you can slice, and, and for each of those, you can have a, a pie chart. Here, what we looked at was where does the Polish and Slovenian brain juice flows? Where do or did scientists go? Um, and we could show different profile of migration of highly qualified scientists in this particular field of cancer research, with the Polish scientists having migrated more, let's say, to the US or uh, Great Britain or Germany, uh, whereas the, um, the Slovenians uh, seem to, to, to go to the UK in the first place, uh, before, they, before in the first rank compared to the US. Now, um, these are examples of cases to, to steer, to, to create imagination, but as Rapid Manor is based in Boston, uh, I wanted also to show a very practical use case that we've done for the city of Boston um, a few months ago. Um, the first step was to, to look again at gender and look at the gender equality um, gender gap, gender pay gap, that anyone can visualize from what the Boston city publishes on their website, their open data uh, website. So we got the open data, and we, we, use, um, we use rapid manner to infer the gender, which calls the API, and then we just dump the results into Excel. Very practical examples, we can see that you know, some jobs are still very male, some jobs are still very female, and we can still wonder how uh, robots will change that in the next uh, 20 or 30 years. Uh, uh, but so far, it's still very, very genderized. Uh, same thing for gender pay gap. Um, you know, there is some level of equality between men and women for lower paid job, but uh, as soon as we get into the higher paid job, uh, there is a huge uh, gap. Now, the interesting case was also that for this particular project, we had two databases. One was the employees and one was the uh, voters list. So we could use the voters list that had gender to measure um, the accuracy of uh, the gender prediction tool. And it was quite, uh, quite accurate. Uh, and especially when we summarize the, the results to measure a gap, the error kind of cancels out, so 
typically the, the uh, error rate when we measure the gap is less than 1%. Now, the second database that we could analyze was the voters list. So, uh, there were about 400,000 uh, or so voters, and a slight, a slight um, you know, element of context. Uh, in the United States, there has been very recently a decision to uh, announce that cities and towns will receive grants for federal housing only if uh, they have um, uh, a way to assess segregation. And so the New York Times published uh, a few very interesting interactive maps, such as this one, where you can see um, you know, who lives where. Uh, uh, where do the blacks live? Where do the Hispanics, Asian, white, and others? So, uh, and as you can see on the bottom, you know, the patterns completely vary. Uh, uh, depending on the city. Uh, you have New York on the right-hand side. Now, so what we did is we, we looked and we compared what uh, origin would, uh, NAMSO origin uh, extension would, uh, would show uh, compared to what the U.S. census give. Um, one thing to mention is uh, that so far we have published two two different endpoints, one for gender, one for origin, but the taxonomy, uh, the ontology that we have, is very flexible, and, and, uh, and of course we could support different uh, ways to organize the data. In this case, the benefit was that we could get very fine-grained um, mapping of names, uh, through the address and, uh, and through, uh, through the recognition of the names. But also, we could drill further in what in US census is called white or Asian. So one example here is we looked at Portuguese names, Spanish, Italian, and Asian names like Indian, Pakistani, and China. And as you can see on the right hand side, uh, you can see interesting patterns emerge. Uh, so, looking at populations and um, geography, it's called geodemographics, and we, uh, uh, we wish through this tool to prove that onomastics can be a very useful tool to decrypt identity in, in space and in time. But it's even more, let's say, powerful when you think that Indian name is like saying European name. If you would say, for example, oh, when Europeans go to the US, they think that, and then you express a sentiment, it's like too vague, because you need to break down what do the German think, what do the French think, what do the Spanish people think. India, it's the same. It's 1.2 billion people. And you know, their names can be expressed in about you know, one, two, three, four, five, well, quite a few. Uh, alphabets from uh, Bengali to uh, Devanagari or Arabic. And those colors here show the diversity of names that you can recognize just looking at mapping a name and a state and a script. Now, each of those, script, each of those states actually has almost as much diversity within. So, um, so there is a lot of further drill down that you can, you can do through, uh, through uh, onomastics. Now, the question of combining onomastics and sentiment analysis, we can take the example of gender. What do women and men think? whether it's about um, a brand, a topic, a place. Uh, of course, this is, a very, this is often a very um, important element. Um, we have one project, for example, with a, a, a Swedish um, organization, government organization, and to look at 
uh, who, who's talking in the media and who do the media talk about? How often do they mention uh, a female name, a male name, and, um, and how much diversity is there also in those names? Now, of course, when we mention culture, that affects even further. Um, culture, language, and origin affect even further sentiment. Football is, you know, a good example. Uh, if you are from a country, you might, uh, you might um, uh, support your team um, or not. Uh, you, might, you might feel uh, a special bond to a country or region, even if you have moved away from this country for quite a while. And, um, and we'd be very interested to explore further how we can combine names or extension with some of the very complex and very exciting process that have been presented earlier on sentiment analysis, but you know even in some uh, in some other fields like marketing and health health areas. So I intentionally left this page quite simple to illustrate the fact that this is a page that we can write together. Um, we came here to grow our relationship with RapidMiner, with the RapidMiner ecosystem, um, work together on very exciting projects, and do proof of value together at clients, combining very hard data mining skills with um, what we can bring to databases that don't have much information like uh, like Twitter in some cases, LinkedIn, uh, scientific databases, um, geotag databases, where we can infer additional variables. So how to get the extension? It's very easy. You just go to the RapidMiner marketplace and you search for gender or namzor or onomastics and, and that extension should come up. The extract gender operator is completely free. It doesn't require any, any registration. Uh, for the other operators, you need to uh, get a license key from, uh, from uh, NAMZO website. And we've decided to, to, uh, to make this a freemium, but requiring, uh, requiring a credit card. So you do get you do need to put a credit card to get the API key, even if it's a freemium and it's free to try. As part of the RapidMiner ecosystem, we also want this to be a mutually beneficial um, relationship, so we're very much looking forward to the next announcements, maybe at the next RapidMiner conference when uh, the RapidMiner marketplace will actually be a marketplace in the sense also of uh, sharing revenues and, uh, and leads. In the meantime, we have uh, everything prepared so that um, we can have also a channel agreement with RapidMiner resellers and with RapidMiner themselves to pursue joint opportunities. So, those are my contact details. Um, happy to, to answer any question and to drill further in any of those, um, uh, any of those uh, use cases. Uh, just one additional thing to mention. Uh, what you see down there, FDI Magnet, is uh, one of the three brands we use to promote our services. Uh, Namzor is really the software. It's recognizing names. FDI Magnet is the first application that we found for this tool, which was to help a country attract foreign direct investments, reconnect with their scientists, basically um, exploit, in the good sense, uh, their diaspora for economic benefits. And Gender Gap Greater is a, a joint project with a, a very interesting lady, Elena Rossini. She's a filmmaker and and what we do together is a pro bono project to, to measure the, gender, the gap across all professional fields. And everyone is also uh, free to participate to this pro bono project. 
Um, thank you very much. Thank you.